what's good everybody it's your boy Zilla Jackson back at another video baby let's go you already know what it is make sure y'all like comment subscribe let's get right into it we're reacting to a video called the seven daily sins as youtubers uh what's it this dude's name again hold on let me check what table watchable Something like that. Uh but yeah. Let's get right into it. Let's see who the seven deadly sins are and yeah, let's yeah. The seven deadly sins greed, lust, envy, pride. I need to turn this down. Jesus Christ, that is loud in my ear. Pride, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. There are seven YouTubers in particular that perfectly exemplify these seven deadly sins. I ain't gonna lie, Nikocado, Nikocado Avocado makes sense to be gluttony. I'm sorry, but if this is greed right here, uh, who, hmm. I mean, so far, yeah, it would be Logan Paul. But if this was back in like 2016, it would be Jake. It would have been one of the Paul brothers, no matter what. But I saw another one where it was just like a different pictures and it had EDP in the places of James Charles. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know how, how terrible that is, bro? They put EDP instead of James Charles. I mean, they both. Listen, they're both not good people. They both went after minors. I mean, damn. I don't. I don't even know. But let's keep these. Starting with greed. Greed is thought of as the uncontrolled longing for oh, something got, when someone has wrong. to sacrifice something important to get it. Jake Tran is the perfect candidate for this sin. I While Jake definitely seems to be enjoying his life with expensive watches and fancy vacations, what did he sacrifice to get there? Well, that would be his video quality. There was a point in time when Jake was producing some of the best documentary content on YouTube and his channel would absolutely explode because of it. But Jake sees himself as a capitalist. Okay, as a as a 21 year old. It's actually kind of fun watching these documentary YouTubers like Sunny Sunny V2. Oh, I said that right. Sunny V2 Internet Anarchist um all these other documentary iceberg uh youtubers they're all fire bro loved it i love to watch their videos i'm sub to a couple of them but i'm not sub to <laughs> sub to most of them bro those are the ones i usually react to too so it's like you know might as well. I haven't reacted to music yet, but that will be coming soon. I will be reacting to some music. It just depends. Uh, I'll give it two times where I get copy copyright strike. If I get copyright strike before I even get a video posted, then no more, no more music videos, no more music reactions from me. So, see. Yeah. So he needed to optimize his machine. At first, this optimization would start out small and barely noticeable. However, it wouldn't be long until this machine was so optimized it would lose the soul that everyone loved in the first place. Completely outsource the editing to people on Fiverr? Check. Include a sponsor in every video? Check. Accept deals from scammy sponsors that have questionable products they want to sell to his fans? Check. You could definitely make the argument that Jake is even more successful after he indulged in greed, but the same could not be said for the YouTuber who indulged in lust. Lust is thought of as unbridled sexual desire. Often when one has to sacrifice something pure. Let me put my glasses on for this, bro. Need to go in full analysis. analysis. Let me wipe them off real quick, though. We have to get our full analysis. 
but then like those are let's go pure because of it james charles is the perfect candidate for the sin of lust the beauty youtuber who was on top of the world but allowed his empire to be destroyed because of his desires in late 2020, wow. James was gaining an impressive average of nearly 150 million monthly views. But it wouldn't be long until his reputation was completely destroyed, beginning with James saying he was into straight men. I want a boy who is straight. <laughs> Love that for you. That's easy. Uh, it's, you, it's easier than you would think. After James was photographed at Coachella with a straight Instagram model named Gage Gomez, I really hope this doesn't make my account ban. Literally, I don't really care about this picture. You can't really see a lot, but this right here, to our mouse is overexposed. Overexposed. This is the type of stuff that can people accounts ban and stuff like that, bro. As he would respond to the questions asking if this was his new boyfriend with the following tweet. Nope, unfortunately I'm still very single. This boy played me for months on end and is a disgusting con artist. I'm thankful I had my friends with me to protect me. After James tweeted- Bro. Okay, so the dude that's making this video, right? Pretty sure you don't say your name at the end of the video. I need you to make another one for tiktokers like yeah yeah youtubers as uh, seven daily scenes yeah i understand tiktokers would be hilarious if you make one for tiktokers bro that shit would be funny as fuck i don't care bro that shit would be hilarious that's if you're watching me if you're watching me shout out to you if you're not bro please please you guys that are that are going to watch this video or the people that you know are behind the screen sending it out to more people even if you don't know me i don't care tag this dude and tell him do a tiktoker one it's going to be hilarious i'm telling you Gage would release a video alleging James was pressuring him into meeting up and beginning a physical relationship. But this drama would look like nothing in Like, look, 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 look. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop pausing the video. I'm gonna keep him going, right? But you remember that girl that did a, the interpreted dance as her apology video? That's lust right there, bro. <laughs> I already gave you one. I already gave you one of them, bro. Use her as lust and then, you know, find out the other six. I already got one of them, so. Comparison to the events that would be the downfall of James Charles. It would all start when a Twitter user named Isaiah13 would make a tweet saying, If you're gonna text someone, make sure you know their age. He added me on Insta. My Insta has my TikTok, which shows my age. Isaiah would then reveal on his TikTok, James had been pressuring him to send explicit photos. It wouldn't be long until several other individuals would also come forward alleging they had a similar experience. James has not had a single month of positive subscriber growth since the drama. But unlike James, the next YouTuber on this list would explode in subscribers once his drama began. To nah, bro, this dude is weird, bro. I mean, I show speed is weird too, but then like, bro, this dude is OD weird. Nah, because it, it worked just a little bit, doesn't mean you gotta continue doing it. Does this dude even have an account sale? Hold to on, envy that? is to have a longing arousal for someone else's belongings. But to take it a step farther is to have an extreme desire to actually be someone else. This personifies White Boy M, a YouTube- White Boy M. I'm probably gonna butcher this, but you know, I'm gonna try with my dyslexia. Teen would make a- He still has an account. Oh my god. Bro, he had 21k views, bro.
Wait, does he still act the same though? Eleven hours ago. It's like the perfect time for. What? Yo, what's good, YouTube man? It's your boy. Why you not getting my? Look at it. She needs to sleep up. Okay. What y'all be into? Hey man. We'll talk to y'all while he's talking to the live. Hey man. I'm about to a man you to him. What? Send him the guy. All right, I'm done with that. Uber who constructed his. I mean. Okay, at the at the moment in time where we're watching. Huge difference. I appreciate that. Thank you for switching up. <laughs> this wasn't gonna last was not gonna last long. But props to you for even getting that audience in the first place. Props to you. Entire personality around that of a more popular YouTuber, I show speed. Before M was trying to become too. speed by emulating him, he would post interview style content. But pay attention to how his voice sounds. How many years did Richard Nixon serve president? Bro, child, I am not even about to lie to y'all boys right now, bro. I was on Omegle and a guy actually showed, you know, his like, yeah, like his private part, bro. The speed imitation okay. would begin when M would start off a live stream with the title Live with I Show Speed. The live stream would gain significantly more traction because of the clickbait title, signaling to M that speed was his ticket to virality. Over the coming months, M would begin acting more and more like speed, talking completely differently than he used to. This would continue until a series of clips would completely blow up white. Bro, he's literally taking everything that Speed does. Bro, he's he literally did everything Speed did. <laughs> he put his own his own shit on it. <laughs> like he would, like I'm guessing he'll play he'll do his own gameplay and everything, right? But like he copied Speed's mannerisms to a T. To a T, bro. That's wild. White boy M's channel. Really? I have 14 out of 15 bubbles, bro. Are you serious right now, bro? But internet success from directly copying someone else is never sustainable in the long run, which is right. reflected by M's statistics. While White Boy M would be considered somewhat of a small YouTuber, the next YouTuber on this list is one of the biggest on the platform and is representing. I mean, so so far what we've seen, right? He's still pretty. He's doing pretty decently as a YouTuber. I mean, it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. So now the Jake Paul situation, yeah, duh. <laughs> Boy, you in hot water. You were in hot water, sir. You need to step down from your position, and you, know, you need to cool down. And let your executives handle this because, Lord have mercy, you are, woo wee, you are one step closer to being canceled and falling, falling for this situation once again. But you have made two darn, you made two darn big mistakes, and now, shoo, shoo, man, I don't even know. Good luck to you, cause you ain't gonna listen to me, so might as well. <laughs> Pride. Oh, yeah. Pride is defined as dangerously corrupt selfishness, putting one's own desires, urges, wants, and whims before the welfare of others. If we take a look at the Ooh. events that transpired, hold on, down in the comments, you guys that are my age, younger, or older, and you're on TikTok, what TikToker do you think would be Pride? I want y'all to comment that down below, bro. I want to see the comments below, bro. That's even if y'all fuck with me, for real. <laughs> like, I want to see... I don't care about no other ones, because we already know who Lust is, all right? We already know what the one that's going to be Lust, right? I need the one that's going to be Pride in, a com in the comments, bro. I can think of a couple. Maybe not off the top of my head. Maybe, like, a few scrolls in, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this, this dude is definitely Pride. But yeah. <laughs> in Logan Paul's YouTube career, Pride would be a perfect descriptor to summarize them. Starting with his early Vine days, which could best be described as him acting like a public nuisance. Pride yeah. could certainly be seen in these type of videos because he was acting like an idiot, annoying the public for his own personal gain. I mean, if you're going off of 
early videos, you might as well put Jake Paul in there too. You might as well have a duo situation because they were doing the same thing. It's just that they both they both blew up at the same time, but Jake over overtook Logan because of Bizarre Bark. Yes, I grew up watching Bizarre Bark. I had to think about my life, bro. I mean, this can cater to the old the old heads and stuff like that, but I really do miss the old carts. I'm talking about like, like the 2000, 2010, not even full 2010. It's like up to 2012. 2000, 2012 era of cartoons and music was fire, bro. I don't care. That's when you had Kenneth Lamar, Lil Wayne. You had the end of Jamie Foxx's career. You had a... You had a couple more artists out there that was just doing a thing. You had Jay-Z still, like, coming down off of his high horse, right? And then you have fucking, you have cartoons, like, I'm, I'm not even going to count this as cartoons. You have Cartoon Network being Cartoon Network and then switching over to the realist side of Cartoon Network with Destroy, Build, Destroy, Dude, What Will Happen, and then you have the... The new shit that they that we want continued like uh symbiotic tight end or or a couple of other shows and then you got chowder the goat you have regular show you had uh adventure time you had bro i could keep going on that's just cartoon network bro imagine what we had in disney channel bro disney channel fire especially like the late night movies you could watch uh you'd be watching fucking what you gonna call it but up up and away up up and away um my favorite was xenon xenon 21st century yeah that was that was my favorite uh what else it was it's a lot of lot of disney channel movies bro bro that was like back then it was like Prime Power Rangers. Prime Power Rangers, you remember that? Prime Power Rangers. I'm talking about SPD. I'm talking about Mighty Morphin. I'm talking about uh who else? Dino Thunder? Oh my god, Dino Thunder? Oh my god. Bro, y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know, bro. Man. I need all those shows to just Come out tomorrow, bro. I will start watching that shit all over again. Put it on Disney Plus. Put it on. But uh, I don't want to fucking log into no. I don't want to log into the Nickelodeon app because the Nickelodeon app is garbage, and I don't want to try to log into the Boomerang app either because they're both garbage. They don't show shit. And I definitely do not want to log into the to the Nickelodeon affiliate app. What's it called? It's called a. Uh, Paramount Plus? Yeah, nah, bro. Nah, bro. I just sit here and be depressed. All right. But Logan Paul's prideful actions would only get worse from here on out. The major event we could point to would be when Logan filmed a vlog in a Japanese forest, which is colloquially called the by forests. While filming oh, yeah, his weird. vlog, he was acting in his normal over-the-top kid-friendly manner, but the worst part of the whole situation would be when he showed an actual dead body of a man who had deleted himself. After a huge apology tour, it would appear that Logan had reconstructed his reputation, but he would again put his own wants before the welfare of others a few years later. In early 2022, Logan would begin his foray into crypto. This journey would start with a few promotions of what are called Called pump and dump coins. These are coins designed to make their founders money without providing any value to the community that supported them. Logan would profit immensely from promoting these coins. But I mean, I would never scam anybody that actually trusts me, but I don't care because I'm a I'm a person that values like these are my three values: trust. Well, it's more like trust, honesty, and respect. If you, if I, if you're not, if you're not gonna respect me, it means you can't trust me, which means, yeah, 
it, it's literally take away take away one thing you're taking away all of them like yeah bro that's crazy bro this dude this dude got away with it got away with it the first time build his build his hype back up with a couple of boxing matches against ksi brought out prime and they started doing stupid shit again like doing zoo coin I'm not stupid enough to fall for this, but there's a lot of people that were stupid enough to fall for this. You should have waited until, like, I guess you can't really, like, say that they're stupid or anything. But then, because there's no way that you can actually test and see if it's actually something else. Like, you can't wait to see somebody else do it before you actually put your, put your money into it. But, you know, I just don't trust a lot of influencers like that <laughs> and especially there's a lot of influencers that have a very bad track record like there's a, there's a couple of people like that I actually would trust like if i like daifu daifu bro if y'all if i don't watch him bro you should watch him that dude is fire daifu i would i would actually go to one of his sponsored pages like one of his yeah, one of the pages that he's sponsored by, I will actually go to one of his pages, and I'll actually go to Chisel to Donna's pages. Hello, like they do Hello Fresh, Teej, and they do uh, what you call it? Hello Fresh, Teej, and Manscape, bro. Those are the only sites I actually really would like for reals. Like, dude, trusted sites like that is what I would trust into. But things like bitcoin where i have to put a lot of money into it just so i can get a lot of money back <laughs> you're tripping but these promotions would pale in comparison to logan's own project crypto zoo a game which similar to a pump and dump coin was designed with a minimal amount of effort to earn as much money as possible for its founders the game would be broken and underdeveloped leaving a huge trail of victims who lost significant sums of money after believing in logan's promises while Logan Paul is big on YouTube, this YouTuber is also big but in a different way and is our candidate for gluttony. Gluttony is the over- oh, I got something on my, my other monitor. Monitor, I had to wipe off. It was a gnat, bro. I had a gnat on my monitor, bro. What happens with it anyway? It is... It's going whatever. It is 12.24 a.m. So overconsumption and overindulgence in something to the point of waste. The genre of YouTube videos known as mukbang would be the perfect candidate to represent gluttony, as the videos involve preparing an ungodly amount of food and then attempting to finish it. But when choosing a specific YouTuber to represent gluttony, it would have to be Nikocado Avocado. Nikocado Avocado, otherwise known as Nicholas Perry, would begin his YouTube channel in Colombia documenting his vegan life when he moved there with his then boyfriend. He would cover various things about his lifestyle, but his channel would only start gaining a decent amount of traction on his videos when he ate food in front of the camera, otherwise known as a mukbang. At first, these mukbangs would start out with a somewhat reasonable amount of vegan food and usually involve Nicholas finishing it. But about a year into his YouTube journey, Nicholas would make a video stating his frustrations with the vegan community and saying he would be departing from it. From this point forward, although his dishes were still very healthy, they would occasionally start containing meat in them. But being in the mukbang niche meant that to stay interesting and compete against the other YouTubers, Nicholas would have to up the portions and the visual intrigue of the food he was eating. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. There's a difference between destroying your body for a good thing, like working out and running. Still destroying your body, no matter what you do, you're destroying your body. That's what physics it physics is. You're destroying you're tearing muscles to build stronger muscles. That's still destroying your body at the same time. But the wrong way to destroy your body is clog arteries, which most of the foods that he's eating is definitely clogged arteries. Uh I'm not really trying to go into it, but like take for instance Matt Stoney, that dude is still skinny, bro. Or Eric the Electric. That dude is still skinny, bro. 
and you see the amount of food that he eats in every single video like bro i don't i don't understand he does this every day too look bro he does it every day every day it's a new video every day bro it's not like he's giving it like a week if i do one of these bro if i ever do one of these it's gonna be like start right here and then it'll be like right here that's a week that's a week maybe maybe a week and a half it's a new video that will be pushed to right here if that but these will all be reaction videos reaction videos and then probably right here will be another mukbang but like bro this is od that's od the food Nikocado Avocado was eating began to become increasingly like unhealthy and the portions larger as time went on. With this gradual change, his weight would increase as well, transforming the once skinny vegan YouTuber into a morbidly obese person that uses a mobility scooter to get around. Nikocado went from vegan to meat lover, and the next YouTuber would be very angry at him, which is perfect because she's our candidate for Wrath. Wrath is can't bro bro how do i say it okay so the last video i saw about the vegan youtuber was the the n star gg star s or no e star s Yeah, yeah, she said that was derogatory term, and then she made the acronym for it, bro. What? I'm not. You see my complexion, right? And I showed that to my mom, too. You see my complexion? I am dark, okay? I had to have a light. I had to have two lights, actually. I had to have two lights just to show my face in the camera right now. I had to show my mom this. I showed my mom this. She was like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. Yeah, we can. Yeah. I mean, she's still trying to push her. I keep on knocking over my mic, bro. She's still, she's still trying to push her way back into the internet. And nobody wants her on the internet in the first place. I mean, it's a difference between, like, how you say it? It's a difference between forcefully shoving your beliefs in people's faces and actually letting the people that want to want to know what you believe in i mean yeah yeah probably a healthier lifestyle yeah we may be killing the animals but this is people's preference they want to eat meat let them eat meat you want to be out there eating soybeans and tofu for the rest of your life, then go ahead and eat soybeans, tofu, and orange juice. Because, well, I personally like steak and chicken. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Is the most simple of the seven deadly sins and is pretty much thought of as excessive anger. Thinking about angry YouTubers, images of raging gamers probably come to mind, but there's actually someone who's much more angry than them. Observing her outward appearances, she would probably be one of the last people you would think should fill this spot on the list. But the truth is, she's one of the most angry YouTubers of. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm buzzing. But. I just want to. I just want to know the overview real quick, bro. Okay, he's fifty-eight years old. Okay, so it makes sense. He's he's as old as my grandma. He's older than my grandma. 
of them all. That vegan teacher, otherwise known as Katie Dykemeyer, would create her channel on July 21st, 2018, but she wouldn't start uploading until the pandemic began in 2020. Her videos would start off very tame and would be what you would expect from a typical vegan activist, although her videos would change forever once she made the discovery that the more outrageous she made her content, the more views she obtained. Even though these views would be comprised of people watching for the sole purpose of laughing at her, her views would go up nonetheless. At a certain point, she would divide. Bro, you gotta stop making stupid people famous. Where's the die for, bro? Because, like, y'all, y'all hype people up just so you can laugh at them. Y'all hype people up just for, just for la shits and giggles, bro. Like, you see what these people are doing? They get that little bit of clout and they go above and beyond they start doing outrageous bullshit like come here listen they start fucking becoming the people that you guys hate stop this shit literally i'm sorry i probably ear raped you right now but literally this is what's going on and this is what's happening fucking what is what is so in history class, they say, we learn history so history does not repeat itself. That replies to today too. Something that happened three days ago, you want to prevent it? Well, look back three days ago and you can prevent it. See how easy that was? Oh my God. Fucking humanity, bro. Humanity is going, is going down the shitter. Buys a new strategy, combining outrageous content with calling out famous influencers. But if her goal is to actually convert people to the vegan lifestyle and not just increase her own notoriety, it certainly isn't working. As her image of the crazy vegan steers people away from considering it as a serious lifestyle. You could say a lot of things about that classes. vegan teacher, but one thing you definitely can't say is that she's lazy and isn't always trying new strategies to get people to be vegan. However, in terms of work ethic, the same could not be said for the next YouTuber on this list and our candidate for Sloth. Sloth is the reluctance to work or make an effort, otherwise known as laziness. The best way we can apply this idea to the concept of YouTube is a failure to innovate and create new content. As we can pretty much examine every failed YouTube channel and see that 90% of the time, the chief cause of its downfall was lack of all right bro i know i said i wanted like a like a seven deadly sins of tiktok completely scrap that idea bro actually don't don't completely scrap it maybe do the seven deadly sins of streamers because it's a lot of the twitch streamers that have not put it that don't put in the work bro like literally they be up and then they fucking fizzle out because people will start catching up on their bullshit. One, fucking Aiden Ross. You can put him at fucking gluttony. Either gluttony or fucking, not gluttony, not, not gluttony. That's, that's for somebody husky. Let's say that. Uh, that's for a husky person. But uh, you could put him at greed. Yeah, probably greed or envy. Something like that. Somewhere 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 within those six because he's not gluttony. And he's probably not a sloth. But this dude is weird. Let's be honest. That dude is fucking outrageously weird. That dude is outrageously weird, bro. But yeah of innovation. Boogie two nine eight eight is no exception to this rule and is a great candidate for the Nah, y'all don't believe me, bro? Y'all don't believe me? Bro, he just got exposed by Jojo the Mofo from when he when he first started streaming on Kick, bro. He was showing P Star Star N on a stream. And you guys don't believe that's weird, bro. That is weird. Don't don't even try to type in the comments about him. <laughs> 
Don't even try to defend it, bro. You can't defend it. It's already ups. It's raps, bro. I don't care. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to destroy anybody's image. But if you're gonna put it out on the internet, bro. If you're gonna put that stuff out on the internet, bro. There's millions of people out there in the internet, whether they're minors, adults, elder adults. And they actually bond with what you say and what you believe in and what happens. Then they're looking at you as a role model. You got to actually hold your uh, yourself up to the, you got to hold yourself up to that same accountability and fucking lock the fuck in. Because if you're going to be the role model to others, you got to show that shit. And clearly you ain't really showing it. You're just out there being a fucking prick. A bloody twat. A down bad motherfucker. That's what you're being right now. Fucking senses you to treason. In the shadow realm. Matter of fact. I don't even want to. I don't even want to get into it. Keep going. The deadly sin of sloth. Boogie hasn't seen a month of positive subscriber growth in over three years. And the primary reason for this is the fact that his content never changes. A vast majority of his videos are him sitting in his room talking about something or complaining about his life. If you look at a video made one year ago, two years ago, even three years ago, there's no significant change in video quality, the pacing, or really anything at all. The truth is, YouTube is such a competitive game that if you aren't changing anything, people will eventually get bored and watch someone else who is putting in the effort to make their videos perpetually better. And unfortunately for now, Boogie is not making the choice to do that. Damn. This has to be... Damn, that is tough. That is tough. Oh. All right. Well, we know the seven deadly sins of these YouTubers. And even though I'm streaming this while I'm recording this at night, I'm going to make some cuts in it. Maybe. Um, I do appreciate you guys that are going to watch it. All this, you know, hugs, kisses. Y'all into that? I appreciate y'all. And I'll catch y'all next one. Me and your boy Joe Jackson. Peace.